hello lovelies, in this video Tim is going to be looking at behaviourism and social learning for your A level psychology. Now there is a lot for you to remember in here. So to help you remember all the different bits that you need to, over my website there is a massive long course to help you revise. <laughs> learning theory is often abbreviated to SLT and the basic principle is that we learn behaviours by observing other humans around us. This theory was first developed in the 1960s. The 1960s were an era of widespread and very swift social change when traditional roles and traditional psychological theories and models of behaviour were being challenged and changed. SLT or social learning theory advances upon the earlier ideas of conditioning which we saw which were purely behavioural by suggesting that part of the process of learning behaviours is cognitive. It's within the processes of the brain itself. The theory is that we pay attention to role models, those around us as we develop. We observe what these role models do, and finally, we remember to do it ourselves. These role models can vary. They can be other children or older children. They can be the adults around us. They can be our parents, or they can even just be individuals in wider society. Often, though, they are our parents. One notable thing about social learning theory is that it is reductionist. It seeks to explain these complex and very variable patterns of behaviour that we see in humans by reducing them to simple, predictable patterns and processes. Social learning theory, or SLT, proposes the idea that several processes take place. The sum total of these processes is that we learn a behaviour. Modelling is observing and then duplicating the behaviour of another person, regardless of who that person is. We are modelling our own behaviour on theirs and modelling ourselves on them. Identification is when we find certain qualities or behaviours of this other person to be attractive to us. We want to be like them, and so in order to do that, we either consciously or unconsciously model our behaviour on them. This role model will often be someone who's very close to the individual. It could be a parent or a sibling. Something worth noting, however, is that infants today are increasingly exposed to a wide variety of media sources. A lot of psychologists think that they are partly modelling their behaviour on the role models they see on TV and on the internet. Reinforcement is when this behaviour is rewarded or it's punished. Rewarding the behaviour is positive reinforcement. This makes it more likely that that behaviour will be repeated. Punishing the behaviour is negative reinforcement, and this makes it much more likely that the behaviour will not be repeated. There is also the phenomenon of vicarious reinforcement, which can also occur. This is when we see others around us being rewarded for a certain behaviour. We then repeat this behaviour ourselves in the hope of receiving a similar reward. Aside from behavioural processes, SLT, or social learning theory, also states that several cognitive processes need to happen. These are processes within our brains that allow us to copy and then repeat this behaviour, and there are four of these. The first is attention. We need to pay attention to those around us in our immediate social group or proximity, especially anybody that we've identified as a possible role model. Once this role model has been noticed or identified, we then need to pay full attention to their specific displayed behaviour. The second is retention. We need to be able to retain or remember this behaviour for us to be able to replicate it at a later date. Sometimes this has another name, it's known as encoding. The third is reproduction. We then assess our ability to actually physically reproduce the behaviour. If we think we can replicate it, we are more likely to try and do so. If we see behaviour that we don't physically or mentally have the ability to replicate, we're much less likely to try and do so. The fourth and final is motivation. We assess the results of trying to replicate the behaviour. If the response to our replication has been good or positive or we've been rewarded, we're likely to replicate it again. This is known as positive reinforcement, something we've already seen. However, on the other hand, if the response has been bad or we've received some sort of punishment, then we are very unlikely to try again, a process of negative reinforcement. Bandura, leading a group of researchers back in 1961, conducted this experiment to try and see how children in particular are influenced by the behaviour of adult role models and how or if they might try to replicate the behaviour that they've seen. This experiment was done with a total of 72 children, 36 boys and 36 girls. All of them were around four to five years old, with an average of four and a half years old, or about 52 months. 
These children were then placed into groups, and this placing was done on an assessment of how aggressive they had been in their nurseries. Sometimes this way of doing it is known as a matched participant group's design. The children were placed into three groups. The first group observed adults playing aggressively with a doll. They were striking it and hitting it with a mallet and exhibiting generally aggressive or anger-filled behaviour. The second of the three groups observed a group of adults playing non-aggressively or passively or peacefully with other toys instead of the doll. They completely ignored the doll in the room. The third of the three groups was a control group. They didn't observe any adult behaviours at all, and this was done to establish a baseline of how children behave with no other influences. Following this, each child was then placed in a room with a doll, a mallet, and a range of other toys. Their behaviour was observed. The first group, who had witnessed aggressive behaviour by adults, replicated a great deal of that aggressive behaviour. They tried to strike or hit the doll with a hammer. The second group, who hadn't witnessed any aggressive behaviour by adults, also imitated the behaviour that they'd seen and witnessed. They played passively and peacefully with the toys around them, and mostly they ignored the doll. The control group mostly behaved in the same way as the second group. This suggested that non-aggressive or peaceful behaviour was the normal outside of any other influences. It was expected and seemed to be inherent behaviour in the children in the control group. Obviously, the main conclusion from this research back in 1961 was that the behaviour of children is indeed influenced by their observation of how adults behave. A second conclusion, however, was that aggression doesn't seem to be inherent behaviour in children. For them to become aggressive, that behaviour has to be learned through observing adults as role models and then replicating that behaviour. So, this experiment provided some evidence for SLT, social learning theory. As we've seen, the experiment was done under controlled laboratory conditions. There was, therefore, very good control of the variables. It's extremely unlikely that a third outside random factor was skewing the results. And the, these results were also completely scalable. They could be done again with a large group of children, and they could be repeated. The sample size of 72 children is relatively large, but they were all from similar cultures and from a similar geographical area, so it might not be possible to generalise the conclusions. This was also under laboratory conditions, so that's another reason why it might not be possible to generalise the results found to all children everywhere in all cultures. Because of this, this study seems to have limited ecological validity. It may not actually apply in the real world. Lastly, there is a very clear ethical issue here. Aggression in children was directly caused by this experiment, and this undesirable behaviour might remain with them. It could cause future problems or future mental health issues. The children, being children, were also completely unable to give any kind of informed consent to the process. As with any theory or approach in psychology, when we look to evaluate SLT, social learning theory, there are a number of factors we need to consider. As we've just seen, the study done in 1961 by Banjura and a group of researchers does clearly suggest that social learning does happen. Children picked up and repeated behaviours that they'd observed in adults who were role models for them. This study also showed that reinforcement doesn't seem to be needed. The behaviours that the children saw in the adults were repeated by them almost instantly. No reinforcement had to happen. One small but important flaw in the whole experiment is that the type of dolls used were actually designed spe specifically for aggressive and heavy-handed play. You were supposed to strike them or hit them with a hammer. That was their purpose, it was what they were for. It's also possible, since the children had observed adults, that they were simply showing obedience to a social norm rather than actually learning the behaviour. Being children, it's impossible to tell. It's also possible that there may have been an observer effect. The children may have become aggressive because they knew they were being observed. This experiment seems to show that children are influenced by nurture, and we'll look in a later video at the nurture versus nature debate. But there are also behaviours which we know are inherent. They're caused by evolution or genetics. Behaviours can be repeated long after they've been learned, and this makes it completely impossible to conclude that they have been learned entirely through observing one role model. This may just be conformity to wider social norms. Some of these children might have been aggressive anyway.